Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about health behavior theories and we're going to be focusing on the trans theoretical model. The trans theoretical model is a health behavior theory at the intrapersonal level of influence. It's also known as the stages of change model. The core premise of this theory suggests that a behavioral change occurs as a process over time instead of a singular linear event. The trans theoretical model describes the motivation and preparedness levels of an individual to change a desired behavior while also providing a measurement of change. So the trans theoretical model was developed in 1983 by James Prochaska and Carlo Di Clemente during a smoking cessation study. And their goal was to create a systemic approach integrating processes and principles of change from across various different psychotherapy theories. The result, they were able to provide a comprehensive framework to understand and facilitate behavioral change. The trans theoretical model itself emerged from the results of the comparative analysis, which examined the similarities among the leading psychotherapy and behavioral change theories. Stages of change. They're the main foundation of the trans theoretical model, and they indicate that behavioral change is a process that occurs over time. According to the model, a behavioral change occurs as individuals progress through the five stages. Each stage represents a different level of readiness and motivation for an individual. The five constructs that make up the model are pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. It's important to note here, if we look at the visual, the stages of change are cyclical. They're in a circle, which means individuals may be stagnant, they can move forward, or they can move backwards between the phases. Because again, the trans theoretical model is under the belief that change occurs as a process over time and not an event. In pre-contemplation, the individual pl plans to take no action in the near future and lacks awareness. They may be in the stage because they're uninformed or underinformed about the risks associated with the behavior. They may have failed previous attempts to change their behaviors and now they're discouraged, or they simply are just resisting and unmotivated to change. Simply, the individual is not ready for change. Contemplation. Here, the individual considers taking action and is aware that they need to change the behavior. In the following months, usually within six months, they have some level of awareness about the benefits and disadvantages about changing the behavior. However, they're evaluating the pros and the cons. Usually, this can also lead to indecisiveness, which causes the individual to be stagnant. Simply at this stage, the individual is not prepared or equipped to engage in behavioral change yet. Preparation. The individual intends and aims to take action soon. They have already begun to perform tasks that are moving them in the right direction towards improving their behavior and that will ultimately put them in the action stage. They plan to enact change within 30 days. At this point, the individual has already prepared. Uh, they've devised action plans and strategies to begin change. And more importantly, they have set clear goals to modify their behavior. The individual is actively preparing to engage in a plan towards a positive behavioral change in the preparation stage. 
the action stage. At this point, there have been significant lifestyle adjustments that have occurred, which demonstrate a positive shift in behavior. It hasn't been for more than six months. That's important to keep in mind. During the action stage, individuals are engaging in positive reinforcement techniques like social support and feedback, and they're applying problem solving and coping techniques to reduce the temptation of the behavior. At this point, the individual is committed, they're motivated, and they're actively implementing the action plan to continue improving their behavior. The maintenance stage, at this point, the positive behavior change and lifestyle modifications have been maintained for at least six months, which means the individual has successfully applied and modified his behavior. And at this point, the individual just applies the coping te techniques as needed to avoid a relapse in behavior. The individual has successfully adapted a new healthy behavior at this point, and now they are focused on the long-term progress and preventing a relapse. The processes of change. They are also a byproduct of the comparative analysis mentioned earlier, and they're a series of covert and overt activities individuals use to progress through the stages of change. They're independent variables, and they have a systemic relationship with the stages of change. And as we can see, the tenor right here. So what is our first step? Consciousness raising. And that's increasing awareness about causes and consequences of the individual's behavior. Then we have dramatic relief, which involves a positive or negative emotional arousal regarding the behavior. Cognitive and effective assessment of self-image as it pertains to the presence of an unhealthy behavior is when we have an individual have a self-free evaluation. We have an environmental reevaluation, and that incorporates effective and cognitive assessments to examine how the individual's behavior impacts others in society around him. Social liberation are the opportunities that are present demonstrating that society supports the new healthy behavior. Self-liberation, it's the commitment to demonstrate and engage in actions of behavioral change centered on the conviction that change is attainable. And that's a key part. Counter conditioning. The individual acquires knowledge of alternative behaviors to apply as substitutes when tempted to engage in the unhealthy behaviors. Stimulus control involves evaluating your environment and removing the reminders and the cues that trigger the unhealthy behavior and focus on the supportive and positive reminders that encourage the individual to behave in the desired help new behavior. Helping relationships. There are a network of supportive relationships that encourage the new healthy behavior and they're characterized by acceptance, openness, and trust. And lastly, reinforcement management. Increasing the rewards for exhibiting positive behavior. However, if the individual exhibits bad behavior, they get a punishment. So here we have an example of smoking secession uh, of the trans theoretical model being applied to smoking secession. Pre-contemplation, the individual who smokes has no intention to quit smoking. They may be unaware or uninformed. They're discouraged and they will most likely fight you and defend you that they can still smoke. Contemplation, 
they may have some awareness that smoking is bad for them, but they're still smoking. And maybe in the back of their mind, they're delivering, deliberating on the consequences uh, and the benefits of quitting. The process is here. We can see that are applied in these two stages and we can increase the awareness. We can uh, see what negative emotions towards smoking a personal a person has with dramatic relief. Self reevaluation, having them having the smoker assess their self image, having the smoker assess their effect on others, having the smokers realize that society supports and wants them to adapt to the new healthy behavior. Preparation. Once the person decides that they're going to stop smoking, they're going to buy uh, nicotine products. And that is them being committed and taking steps forward. And they have created a plan. Action. Individual stop smoking and now have self-confidence to engage in a positive reinforcement techniques that support and encourage his new healthy behavior. And maintenance individual successfully quit smoking and is now focused on maintaining the non-smoker status and applying the necessary techniques to avoid temptation and relapse. And here we can see that the processes of change applied to these stages are self-liberation, counter-conditioning, stimulus control, helping relationships, and reinforcement management. Here's another visual. As we can see during pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance, we have the 10 steps to change behavior or processes. All right, and my research. Uh, a brief systematic review of the trans theoretical model being applied in uh, an intervention to increase physical activity among older adults with type 2 diabetes and or cardiovascular disease. The study was applied. The study applied the trans theoretical model to implement an intervention designed to improve the physical activity of the older adults. By implementing the trans theoretical model, they were able to identify the most important stages when trying to increase them, increase physical activity levels. The study found that as individuals progress through the stages of change and use more behavior change processes, they actually reported higher level of physical activity and self-efficacy. So they were more confident. Um, and ultimately, the research demonstrates the effectiveness of applying the trans theoretical model to implement tailor-made interventions to individuals across healthcare. 